This is Local 3 News Weekend Today. Well, good morning, Tennessee Valley, and thanks for waking up with us right here on Local 3 News Weekend Today. I'm Xavier Harris, and joined by our meteorologist Tiffany Savona for a first look at our weather. Tiffany, it's a first alert weather day. It is, but this is the last storm alert weather day, Xavier, because of the dangerously cold wind chills, because we will start to see improvements starting this afternoon. So that's certainly some good news. We do have that wind chill advisory in effect through 10 o'clock this morning, Eastern time, 9 a.m. Central time. There's actually a wind chill warning for the Smoky Mountains, but that's just off to our north and east. We could see wind chills get as low as minus 10 over the next few hours before the sun rises. Temperatures are in the single digits and teens once again, just like yesterday morning. It's 14 in Chattanooga, 10 in Cleveland, 10 degrees in Athens. We're at eight in Murphy, eight in Altamont, and nine degrees in Dayton. There's a little bit of a breeze out there. It is minor though, anywhere between three and about nine miles per hour, but any sort of breeze will drop those wind chills below zero. So we're minus one into Walker County in Georgia. Feels like zero in Dalton. Feels like two degrees in Chattanooga. And it feels like four degrees in Altamont. So another very cold start to your Sunday morning. But by this afternoon, we are finally going to get above freezing. So any of that residual snow and ice will begin to melt as air temperatures rise through the teens this morning, end up in the 20s really this afternoon, and highs in the middle 30s for a couple of hours later on today. We'll start off with the sunshine, see a few more clouds roll in during the afternoon. But keep in mind, with temperatures in the middle 30s, it'll still feel like the upper 20s as we get into the afternoon hours. We have a huge warm up in store as we head into the upcoming week, but it comes with a price. Rain chances will be back in the forecast. We'll have that entire seven day for you coming up in a bit. Xavier, back to you. Thanks so much, Tiffany. Well, the death toll continues to rise across the state from last week's winter storm. The Tennessee Emergency Management Agency reported 25 total weather related deaths so far. In Shelby County, there are seven deaths in Knox County. There have been four deaths in Washington and Marshall counties. There are two deaths and in all of the following counties, there have been one death. That's Hickman, Madison, Carroll, Van Buren, Lauderdale, Henry, Coffee, Marion, Rowan and Anderson counties. An 85 year old woman in Indiana has died after wandering outside her home in the cold. Emily Longnecker has a story. It was just immediately, you know, action, right? It was just like, hey, we, we got to figure out what's going on here. Right? Damien Lutz didn't know the woman he and his wife found near their garage door Thursday morning as they headed out to work. But they knew there was probably nothing they could do to help her at that point. You wouldn't be able to survive very long, you know, in this sort of weather. Investigators can't say what caused Rose Outcult to leave her home, which is just a few blocks away from Lutz's house, but say when they found her, she was barefoot and only in a nightgown. At that point, emergency crews had no way of knowing who she was or why she was outside. Basically went to the hospital uh, with this, this person and uh, they were able to um, read the pacemaker, find out the, the name of the person, and then the coroner's office made uh, notification. Johnson County Sheriff Dwayne Burgess called what happened to Outcult tragic, saying he didn't know why she wandered away from her home out into the cold. Burgess advised people with older family members who might be prone to wandering off to look into a program called Project Lifesaver through their local fire department. The program outfits a person with a bracelet that gives off a constant signal that's monitored by fire departments who take part in the program. They can track those individuals. Johnson County has six fire departments in the program, one of them in Trafalgar. It doesn't cost a family a thing. You can get them signed up, they can get the bracelets or the, looks like a watch. Damian Lutz wonders if outside cameras would have helped him and his wife found Elk Cult sooner. You know, if we'd seen motion or something, uh, you know, maybe she could, you know, still be alive. Lutz right? doesn't know Elk Cult's family, but wants them to know how sorry he is about what happened. You know, I hope they're dealing with this as best they can, right? So, I mean, that's, that's all you can wish for. Just an unfortunate situation. Investigators do not believe that foul play was involved, but they have figured out that exposure to the cold temperatures contributed to Alt Cult's death. In Johnson County, Emily Longnecker, 13 News. We 
The case surrounding the Covenant school shooters writings will be back in court next Friday. There will be two hearings motions during that Friday's proceeding. The first is whether a list detailing the documents turned over to the judge for her private viewing should be released publicly. The second motion is to set a date for a hearing where the judge will decide if the shooters journal and other records will be made public. Well, back here locally, a woman suffered burns to her body following an apparent mishap with a candle that sparked an apartment fire on Mountain Creek Road. Right before six last night, fire crews responded to the Alpine Villas apartments. Responders found the victim with injuries and she was quickly transported to a local hospital by Hamilton County EMS. The fire was under control in minutes and there was moderate damage to the victim's apartment. Investigators say it appears that a candle burning in the bathroom caused the fire. A brewery on Chattanooga's North Shore has unexpectedly closed, leaving 44 employees without a job. The general managers of Cherry Street Brewery are trying to raise money for their staff after they were left jobless with just three days notice. They said business had not been sufficient to stay in operation. The general managers also say they appreciate any donations that can help the staff cover their living costs while they seek other employment. Well, the time now is 6.06, and when we come back on Local 3 News Weekend today, the 2024 presidential election is quickly approaching, and now it's up to, it's up in the air on who the women in this country plan on voting for. We'll have that story after the break. Welcome back. Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley is in New Hampshire, hoping for a good turnout in Tuesday's presidential primary. Haley was once a member of former President Donald Trump's administration as a U.N. ambassador, but now the former president himself taking shots at her campaign. Kylie Otwood reports. Nikki Haley courting all New Hampshire voters, women included. Some saw it as an opportunity to take her by the hand and deliver a blunt message. Others, unexpectedly stumbling upon Haley's event, sat back and watched her work the room, feeling inspired to cast a ballot for the former South Carolina governor at the end of their tea, driven by a desire to move on from Trump. I did vote for Trump. I thought he was a fresh voice. I thought he was bringing something new in, into the government. Um, but I also at now feel like he's much too divisive. Chittister isn't the only New Hampshire woman we spoke with who's planning to shift support from Trump to Haley. Yeah, I did vote for Trump. Trump has been ramping up his attacks on the woman he once chose to serve in his administration. He has used well-worn tactics, calling her nicknames, using her birth name, Nimarada, to criticize her on social media, and promoting the falsehood about Haley's eligibility to serve as president despite being born in the United States. He's also questioned her ability to lead the Republican Party. She's not going to make it. She has no chance. She's got no way. Maggie's not going to be with her. And if she wins, Biden wins. New Hampshire women shrugged off those attacks, saying they're really nothing new for Trump. 
this is primal instinct to lash out and choose lies and promote lies. If he were a cornered animal, he would, kah, kah, but instead he's using words, so whatever. <laughs> Those looking to Haley just want something new, explained Lindsay Moss, who came to see Haley with her mother and her two young children. I think it's good to bring some feminine power to our country and just a different mindset because I don't think what we have going on is going so well right now. While Haley speaks about being a mother and a wife on the campaign trail, she's avoided making her female identity central to her pitch. May the best woman win. All kidding aside, this is not about identity politics. I don't believe in that. And I don't believe in glass ceilings either. And it's an approach that has gained her respect. She's been a legislator, a governor. She's been UN ambassador. She's an accountant. She's a mom. She's a daughter, right? She has friends, so she understands people in a different way. But so far, being the only woman in the Republican race has not translated to an outsized female support. In the Iowa caucuses, CNN entrance polls showed Haley lagging far behind Trump among women. Whether she can close the gap in New Hampshire may determine how much of a challenge she poses to Trump on Tuesday night. Well, if you stepped outside this morning for a morning jog, you already know it's been a frigid morning in Tennessee Valley. Our meteorologist Tiffany Savano has a full forecast after the break. Good morning, and today is our last storm alert weather day for the dangerous cold because we are going to see a big warm up as we begin the new work week. But let's look back at the cold yesterday. We talked about the potential for breaking records, and we did that yesterday. 25 degrees will go down in the record books as the new coldest or lowest high temperature recorded for January 20th. Remember yesterday we were talking about that old record was 28 degrees. So we didn't quite make it to 28, 25 will be the new record. I don't think we're gonna break any records today because this morning our record is minus 10, at least for the air temperatures. So Chattanooga, we're not gonna get anywhere near that. We're at 14 right now. We're at 10 degrees in Cleveland and Athens, nine in Dayton, eight degrees in Altamont, Dalton checking in at 11 degrees and five in Fort Payne. So a little bit colder there in uh, portions of DeKalb County. 
Sustained winds are primarily out of the north, anywhere between 3 and about 7 miles per hour. Any sort of wind with temperatures this low will result in those lower wind chill values. So wind chill readings right around the 0 degree mark for many locations. It feels like 0 in Cleveland, feels like 2 in Athens, feels like 4 degrees in Altamont, feels like 2 in Chattanooga, and it feels like 6 degrees in Scottsboro. High pressure building in today, so we are going to start off with plenty of sunshine on your Sunday. However, a few afternoon clouds will roll in. They're primarily mid and high level clouds and they'll filter out that sunshine a little bit, but all in all, it's still going to be a much nicer day. Look at these highs. Hey, we'll take it. Even though today we'll end up below average, much better than those 20s we saw yesterday. So we'll see highs right around 35 in Chattanooga, 34 in Cleveland, 40 in Blue Ridge, 38 in Dalton, and 32 degrees in Dayton. And those wind chills today will likely be in the upper 20s this afternoon. Tonight, some improvement here as well with lows down into the teens. So no single digits as you're waking up tomorrow morning as you're heading back to work and the kids are heading back to school. Monday, we'll start off with the sunshine and then we'll see increasing clouds throughout the day. But winds will shift more out of the south and east, so we'll start to warm things up tomorrow. High temperatures jump into the upper 40s to near 50 degrees tomorrow. That's a big change. We'll actually be close to average for this time of year, average high 51 degrees. So it has been a cold week. We're ready to warm things up. But the pattern will become more active and warmer as we head into next week. And here's what I mean. We have showers just off to the west Tuesday morning. So those showers will increase across the area, especially by Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night. Then we're just going to see rounds of rain and thunderstorm activity Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and even into Saturday. You could see Wednesday, it's looking wet. A couple of thunderstorms will be possible Wednesday afternoon. Thursday, more rounds of rain over the same areas. Thunderstorms possible during the afternoon hours. And some of this rain could be locally heavy. Friday, it looks like rain in the morning, but then we'll start to dry things out Friday afternoon. However, another system quickly on this one's heels. So we'll see another round of showers, maybe even a few more storms as we head into next weekend. Now, the threat we're monitoring for next week will be the potential for flooding, especially with that snow melt. So we'll have to watch the rivers and the creeks out there because we could see several inches of rain, not only here in the Tennessee Valley, but across much of the deep south and the southeast. Right now, a lot of the computer models honing in anywhere between two and five inches of rain. I know that sounds like a lot. Some models are closer to that two inch mark. Some other models are closer to the four and five inch mark. So there's still some discrepancy. We'll get a better idea as we get a little bit closer, but just know that we will be monitoring that threat for flooding. Today, last storm alert weather day. Tomorrow, like I mentioned, close to 50. Showers roll in. Tuesday 51 and then look at those 60s well above average with the chance for storms Wednesday Thursday and then into the day on Saturday Xavier can't wait to see those temperatures well the Signal Mountains Lions Club and their younger counterparts the Leo's Clubs teamed up Saturday for Meals of Hope putting together 50,000 meals for those in need our local threes Riley Nagel was at the nonprofit Hope for the Inner City for the event and he joins us live in the studio this morning with details. Good morning, Riley. Good morning, Xavier. So even on a frigid Saturday morning, more than 100 members between the Signal Mountain Lions Club and the Leo's Club work in assembly lines to make thousands of meals for the hungry. Lee Prince with the Lions Club says the meals consist of items that can be stored for up to two years, like pastas for spaghetti and macaroni or oats for oatmeal. We also spoke with Leo members Ben Marston and Seven Dap. They say the best part about the Leo's Club is service projects like this. Uh, it's simple, but it, I, I know it's going to be a good thing. It makes me feel like I'm like doing something important and I'm actually like being helpful, which I, is something I enjoy. Prince's delight. Now the meals will be distributed to local charities and churches by the hope of inner city, helping thousands of people in need. If you're interested in learning more about the Signal Mountain Lions Club or the Leo's Club, check out this story over on our website. Reporting live in studio, I'm Riley Nagel. Xavier. All right, well, thanks so much, Riley. Well, the Chattanooga Library is celebrating Dolly Parton's birthday by following her love of books and reading. Our photojournalist, Charlton McCullum, was at the celebration. He has a story. 
Hey, so today is Dolly Parton's birthday. We are hosting Reading 9 to 5. We started at 9 a.m. today at all of our locations. All day we've had reading story times at the top of every hour. We've had crafts that you can come and make and then take them home with you. Dolly Parton is the patron saint of Tennessee. <laughs> she is our queen. It's just a day to celebrate Dolly Parton our love for reading, and also promote Imagination Library. Make sure kids are signed up for that to get those free books from Dolly. Yes, I love reading. It's mostly because you can learn a ton of new words, you can have fun, you can dive into your own little universe with the different kinds of topics of a book. The whole day is centered around inspiring kids from all ages to read um, and to continue reading even after, you know, on into adulthood. It feels great. It feels awesome to see all the kids that are here and that have been all day. It's fun to celebrate Dolly in this way. It's just all about feeling good, loving reading, loving our Queen of Tennessee, and just celebrating the library and our community. It's been pretty fun. I've done a few crafts. I've been reading most of the day. Dolly means a lot to our family and she's a really good person and we would hate it if she stopped making songs. Precious little kids, you just love them. Well, after the break on Local 3 News Weekend today, the Chattanooga Mott stayed undefeated in SoCon play with a close win over ETSU. Plus, it was the third Saturday in January. Samantha Cassano re recaps Tennessee's wire to wire victory over Alabama up next in sports. Sure, we've talked ad nauseum about how good the Chattanooga women have been this season, but they're not the only ones who have started conference play undefeated. ETSU also entered Saturday with a 2-0 record, and with these two teams meeting for the first time this year, someone would be forced to take the L. Mox wrapping up their four-game homestand. The ladies are up by five at the break. Seagrin Olaf Satter had the hot hand for the Mox in this one. She tied her career high with 16 points, including going a perfect four for four from beyond the arc. Obviously, Jada Gwynn had no problem shooting the ball because, duh. She also had a game high seven boards. This offensive one gives the Mox a 15 point lead in the third quarter. But ETS use is not so fast. Brianne Beatty moving across the baseline, draws the foul. She's all kinds of hype, but Curly, your team's still down by seven until all of a sudden they're not. Nevaeh Brown floats it in 
and we've got ourselves a one-point ball game with five minutes to play. UTC finally breaks a nearly 10-minute scoring drought thanks to Raven Thompson. Yeah, she gets a tee, but I think she'll take that if it means some points on the board. Mox in front by a pair with just over a minute to play. The Bucks tie things up on the jumper from Brown. Still even at 50 with less than five seconds to go. Gwynn gets fouled on the shot and she knocks down the biggest free throws of the season like it's absolutely nothing. ETSU gets one final crack at it, but Carson Murphy makes sure the Bucks aren't going to spoil a thing. Hey, no one's saying it was pretty, but Chattanooga does survive with a 52-50 win. It, this team is getting put in moments um, to learn, and, and fortunately for us, we're 15 and 3, so we're able to learn from these uh, while we've won. You know, last year's team, I thought, learned early from a lot of losses that were like this game. This team has not had that enough times. For, for not having a ton of experience at that and to still come through uh, with the win, I'm, I'm glad we were able to do it today. Sole possession of first place in the SOCON is a pretty nice ring to it, huh? The Mox will now hit the road for the next two games, starting with the trip to UNCG on Thursday. That was as dominating a performance somebody's put on us in a long time around here. They're, they're, they're good. They're, they're tough. They're physical. We weren't ready for it. Everyone remembers what happened on the third Saturday in October of 2022. It's also hard to forget last year's top 10 Vols team getting a win over then number one Alabama on the hardwood. But this third Saturday in January showed a glimpse of just how far Tennessee can possibly go this season. Big Orange turned in a wire to wire 91-71 win over one of the nation's top scoring teams in front of a sold out crowd inside Thompson Bowling Arena. They limited Bama star Mark Sears to just 10 points no other tied player had more than eight. As for the Vols offense, that was all fine and dandy. Dalton Connect drops 25 points for the fourth consecutive game, becoming the first SEC player in three plus years to do so. Jonas Adu, Jordan Ganey, and Santiago Vescovi also finished in double figures. Tennessee scored 40 points off of their turnovers and from second chances, but they are even more proud of their defensive efforts. The games like these are, are important to me. You know, big games where there's a lot of hype and they have the numbers to back it up. They're supposed to be a number one offensive team, the best, you know, offensive team. Stuff like that kind of gets me motivated to want to kind of shut that down and, and bring our defensive intensity on the court. This win marks the largest margin of victory over Alabama in 15 years. Big Orange moves to 4-1 and one in conference play. They have a week to rest before heading to Vandy. That does it for your morning sports. Have a great day. All right. Well, you know now it's time to take a look at our birthday and anniversary salutes. First off, we want to wish a happy birthday to Joe Fisher. You know you're going to have a good time today. And we also want to send a shout out to Wayne Hearn, who turns 62 today. We hope you have a great day, Wayne. And happy birthday to Johnny Hensley, who turns 11 today. His family says he goes to Spring Place and he's a big help to all. They love you so much. And congrats, Johnny. You are our Bojangles winner for today. We will mail you a gift card, which means breakfast is on us. If you want to celebrate someone's special day, make sure you send in your salute at least one week in advance to salutes at local3news.com. And please don't forget to include your phone number and address.